Okay, for this video, I'm going to show you how to draw a dog from start to finish using colored pencils. So I'll begin by editing the original photo and then transferring it to paper. So the image I'm using is this one. This is Pepper. So I'll open with Adobe Photoshop Elements. Uh, I know it's an old program, this one's uh, Elements 2, but um, it has all the uh, all the basic editing features without all the complicated stuff. So, um, first thing I want to do is just straighten the image because he's a pepper's lined on an angle. So, I'm going to resize first of all. I'll change the canvas size. Just make that 20% bigger. Okay. And now I'll rotate the image. Oh, that's okay. <clears throat> that's more or less where I want. Now I'll crop it. Okay, so that's my cropped image. Um, now I want to get rid of the color. Um, because I'll be printing this off. So I'll change it to grayscale and then I want to just change the brightness and contrast to touch. Take the brightness up a little bit and then the contrast. That looks fine. Print preview. So I'll do scale to fit. and print that. So I've printed off my image. This is the image I'm going to use. This is the size. Um, and the way I'm going to transfer it to the paper is by using um, a light box. Um, it just ensures that the dimensions are correct, which is really important when you're doing um, a portrait. So the paper I'm using is Strathmore Bristol Smooth 300 series. Um, I use this for most of my portraits. Um, it's very smooth. Some people prefer um, paper with a bit more texture. Um, but this, this works for me. So the way I do it is I'll switch off all the lights. <coughs> Okay, so as you can see, there's the uh, image of Pepper. So I've just got to uh, line up the image correctly. So I just flip that over and then center the image. I'm using some frisket um, to hold this in place. It's uh, it's a low tuck tape so it's not going to rip the paper when you uh, when you take it off. So there we go. Um, so I'll just 
transfer the outlines now. So I'm ready now to uh, draw the outline. Um, I'm just using uh, a HP pencil. Um, I'm just going to do the outlines uh, very lightly. Um, if you use um, a lighter pencil um, with a harder lead, uh, it can scratch the paper. It can make a, an indent in the paper, uh, which you don't want. Um, because then when you come to put your pencils on, your coloured pencils on, um, you'll have a little white line um, and it's really difficult to fill in. So I like to uh, just go lightly just around the outline um, just lightly um, I'll go over this again uh, with a bit more pressure later but first um, I just like to make sure I'm getting all the all the details in and when they're they're all there and correct and then um, then I can start uh, adding more more depth, more colour. So I'm just marking these highlights now. to uh, dark sepia um, just so it's not uh, it's not too dark So it's important um, to make sure that the uh, proportions are correct. Um, so again, <clears throat> again, I'm just doing this uh, this fairly lightly.
okay so they're looking okay so I'll start to add <clears throat> start to add a bit of color so we're going with the uh, cream some uh, umber this is a Pablo pencil it's a nice uh, nice deep shade of brown So the eyes don't really look much at the moment uh, as with the whole drawing it takes a while for it to uh, start to come alive so all I'm doing at the moment is uh, just the foundations so I'm going in with all the colours quite lightly So at this stage I'm referring to the uh, the original photo about every second or so to make sure I'm uh, getting all the right details in all the right places. flesh um, really useful color you can use this uh, so many different places so with people with pets um, flowers it's uh, it's one of the um, one of the colors that I couldn't really be without Cinnamon, another um, 
another colour I couldn't be without. Cinnamon's great for um, uh, going over the tops of things for highlights. Um, you can put it on really lightly and it's just a <clears throat> like a hint of pinky orange. I can go quite dark and it's, uh, it changes again completely. Um, But yeah, it's, uh, it's a really useful colour. So I'm starting to go a bit darker with the, uh, with the pink around the eyes. Not too much. And it's all it's all about building up the colours slowly. Um, if you do it uh, if you do it too quick, you can put too much of one colour on, or um, or put the wrong colour on. If you go nice and slow, you uh, you you have more control. Okay, so I'm going to start to uh, darken the eyes more. So I'm just trying to blend this uh, this edge in. And then when I come to put the black on, um, this dark sepia has done most of the work of uh, blending the edge in. Okay, so I'll go in with, uh, with the black now. So I'm just going around the highlights at the moment. And when you do the, um, the reflections in the eyes, uh, it's... Uh, it's a good idea to uh, really take your time because it's easy to put them in the wrong place or um, not put them in at all or even go over them and remove them completely. Um, <clears throat> okay so this a couple of little highlights. I'm just going to use this uh, embossing tool 
just to indent the paper a touch so that ensures they stay there I think I'll do that one <clears throat> Okay, now where I've uh, indented the paper, they should stay white, and there you are. So I can go nice and lightly around it and darken them up as much as I need to, where I need to. Just blend this black into the dark sepia. And I can always add a bit more of the dark sepia. So I'm still not going in too much with the black. Um, I'll be doing some of this with with the grey. Uh, what have we got? What grey for? So I'm going to start uh, putting some on the eye. more dark sepia so as you can see it's a, it's a matter of putting them on bit by bit nice light layers and uh, yeah it takes takes a while but it's worth it in the end Okay, so there's, uh, there's all sorts of colours going on in the eye. So I'll put a touch of uh, uh, burnt ochre or um, terracotta, something of that colour. This is a Pablo uh, dark grey. Um, I'm using this because it's like a bluey grey. So I want grey in there, but I want it to have uh, a bluish 
int I'm going to add some uh, earth green, uh, earth green yellowish, just uh, and just gently rubbing it over the top, um, really lightly. Just gives a very light layer. I think you can go in again now with the black. And then just further build that up. A touch of grey on that highlight. And then these parts I want very dark. So the things that I'm doing here on this this drawing of uh, Pepper. Um, it's uh, it's the same sort of thing you do with any drawing. If you're doing your own pet or uh, or a commission for someone, um, yeah, it's just uh, you know these little points that you can apply to uh, to any drawing. And the more you uh, the more you draw the better you'll become um, you'll start to see things in a different way you'll um, you'll start to uh, see colors that you didn't see before and, uh, and that's no exaggeration you really do um, and even when you're out and about uh, going for a walk you'll um you'll spot things you'll see things differently um and it's a lot of fun okay just gonna get a blue so this is a light ultramarine um it's not desperately important that you follow uh, any particular colour. I mean, a blue, you know, they're basically, you know, light blue and dark blue. Um, so, for the purposes of this, I just want a touch of blue. So, with the Vena Light Ultramarine, um, it's almost a sky blue kind of and um, it adds to the realism with the uh, um, reflection of the, the sky so you're just putting a touch in and that makes all the difference Just go in with a bit more of the cream. And this is the spot of terracotta.
Okay, so uh, we're not far off with the uh, with the eye. It's um, there's the original. So it's not too bad. Um, so I'll darken around around the eye there. Uh, a little more pink, brown. Um, but as you can see, you're just going slowly. Um, it's all uh, it. it uh, you know, it, it helps to get everything in rather than um, rushing in there. So if you can hear that dog in the background, that's uh, Chase next door. Um, he's uh, a lovely dog but his owner's gone out and he leaves the back door open for him so he can go to the toilet um, and uh, poor old Chase doesn't know that his owner's coming back so he barks and he barks shouts at anyone going by and he wants his dad to come home <laughs> but he doesn't leave him long okay so that's the first part of this uh, demo done. Um, the next part I'm going to speed up parts of it um, just so it's not too boring um, but yeah um, I'll get on that tomorrow and post it as soon as I can. Okay thanks for watching.